So you've just got your orders or your new contractor job to your new duty station in Colorado. Maybe you've been to Colorado Springs before, or maybe you haven't. Whether you're coming for Schriever, Peterson, Fort Carson, or the Air Force Academy, you've come to the right place. Making the Springs your home can be an overwhelming and exciting adventure, and I'm here to help guide you through it. First, let's talk about housing because that's the most important thing you'll need as quickly as possible. Now, the Colorado housing market in Colorado Springs can be pretty competitive, especially in the areas close to the military bases. I've been told that there are wait lists for on-base housing, so as soon as you find out, you're gonna want to start strategizing a plan to line up housing, whether it's on base or close to the base. And if you want to rent off base, I always recommend using sites like rentals.com or Hotpads. And even now Zillow has a platform for homeowners to be able to put their listings for tenants to apply for that as well. I would say to avoid Craigslist at all costs because there are so many scams. Now, later in the video, I'm gonna teach you a couple tips and tricks to avoid getting scammed because it can cost thousands of dollars time a lot of stress and heartache that is unnecessary as you're trying to relocate to a brand new area. I've talked to so many people over the years and even victims that have experienced this where they gave all of their money to who they thought was the landlord or the managing company for that property and it turns out that they got scammed. So there are a couple different things that you can do, but you wanna make sure that you don't fall for this trap, especially on Craigslist. Now, Facebook is a little bit uh, more legit. I know that I've put listings on there before, but again, there are so many different scams. One couple that I had talked to, they wired all of their money to this person. It was probably about $1,900. They make it sound like the rent is really good, the down payment is really good, and so it creates an excitement and an urgency for people to wanna hurry up and apply for that place. And they will even go as far as being able to get access to that property. So they look legit. They're even showing you the property. They've somehow gotten access to the home and they're able to show it like they're a real real estate agent. And then they end up taking thousands of dollars and wasting months of your time. As far as neighborhoods near each base go, Air Force Academy is located on the northwest part of Colorado Springs. So you're looking at Northgate area. If you're looking at Fort Carson, then that is gonna be located further south of Colorado Springs and into the city of Widefield and Fountain. Now Schriever and Peterson are gonna be on the east side of town. So if you wanna live in those areas, you can look at places like Wolf Ranch. Anything up on the northeast side of town is gonna be close or even on the south end of town you could probably even move to wide field and that is usually about a 20 minute drive it may not be the best idea to buy a house in banning lewis unless you're prepared for that 45 minute commute on a good day. If it starts to snow or the weather is bad, you could be looking at around an hour just to commute to the Fountain Fort Carson base all the way from Banning Lewis. So you wanna make sure that that house is in a reasonable distance. Some people say they don't mind the drive. They're used to driving about an hour, but it does get old and it, with the amount of traffic and the accidents, you just wanna be safe and get home as quickly as you can. If you're thinking about buying a house, make sure that you're able to work out a plan just in case you get stationed elsewhere during the time that you're here. You never know with the military sometimes, and I've seen it all. You might think you'll be here for several years, but I've seen it change sooner, even as soon as just a few months. You may want to look into renting it out possibly in the future, assess your property management fees, and if you're confident that you still want to buy, even if you're breaking even, a lot of people will want to hang on to the house just to have someone renting it so that they can hold on to that equity and keep it long term. So we're thinking about obviously looking towards the future and not any quick short-term scenarios. So here you're looking at five to 10 years before you really start making enough money in equity before you can actually sell the property and make a profit. And that's not in every case. Some people are actually losing money when they sell because they had to relocate. You just wanna make sure that the numbers are gonna work for you long-term. Home appreciation has slowed significantly 
and oftentimes renting is cheaper than buying. So resale value could be tricky unless you get a great deal on a property with a low monthly payment to make it worth it. So for example, if the average rent in your area is $2,500 per month, but your mortgage is $3,000 a month, plus you have to hire property management, it may not be a good idea to buy unless you know for sure that you're going to own this property for a very long time. Now, if you need help navigating through all of this, you're welcome to email me or call me and I can guide you through that. I am a real estate agent here in the area. If you don't know and you haven't been watching, first make sure you are subscribed. My name is Iris and I host the best relocation channel here in Colorado Springs and surrounding areas in Colorado. So you can book a call with me, call, text, email, however you want to do that. But when you're buying, you're going to want to get pre-approved around 90 days before you move. That way, if something happens, then you have a plan, a backup plan, basically. If something doesn't work out, then you can pivot into something else. But waiting until you get here, it's gonna have you scrambling, looking for a place to live, looking for housing on base, and you don't wanna be caught in a situation where had you started sooner, then things could be a lot less chaotic and stressful for you. We wanna make sure that you get settled and on with your new life as quickly as possible, get acclimated and your kids get acclimated to, to the area and the new schools and all that fun stuff. Now, we also have a lease with the right to purchase program. So if you're not 100% sure about buying right away, you might wanna test drive the neighborhood first, make sure the kids like the school, that you want to actually purchase a house, or you know maybe the kids don't like the schools or whatever reason it might be, and you're gonna to want to move, that can be an option too. It's also helpful because if you do like the house, and but then your lease is up, then it's gonna be hard to find something real quickly with our low inventory, and we don't have a ton of houses available so for you to find something in that neighborhood that you love and the house that you love is gonna be a little bit challenging. So having that rent to own house is going to protect you and not having to move twice as well because nobody loves to move. It costs a lot of money, it's draining, it's time consuming. So um, that would be a good option for that too. But there's a whole video about the rent to own program. So check that out in the description below. It'll explain how that program works and who it's really for because it's not always for people that actually want to buy but sometimes people have large dogs that they don't want to part with and a lot of rental companies don't allow these types of dogs but when you do the rent to own there's no restrictions so lots of things that you can work on there all right so now we got the most important thing out of the way which is housing now let's talk the schools if school districts are important to you, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you visit the websites to learn more about that particular district or school that your student will be going to. Now you can check out the resources on my website. Um, there's a page with all the school districts and links to their website. And even better, if you can come visit and actually interview some of the people that work there and kind of get their energy and see if it's a good school, in person, that would be ideal. I know not everyone can do that, so you can always call, interview the principal in some of those districts, but if you want like reviews from other parents that you can read, or to like check out some of the different programs or comments about different programs, you can visit niche.com. A lot of people like that because it's user friendly and you get a better feel. There's a rating system, so it's very handy in that way. Now you can also call the school liaison program to get more assistance. They're happy to help you, happy to connect you as well. Now, Colorado Springs has a variety of really great schools. It's best to research and reach out to them early so you can get into a school district you love, especially if you are choosing into a different district than the one that you'll actually be living in. Um, there's a very short window for that. I actually just choiced my son in. Usually it's around February um, into March and then they cut it off and then it's harder to choice in. I, wouldn't, I won't say that it's impossible, but you'll have to call a school and find out. Sometimes they'll say, you know what, we're sorry, our window has closed. We've accepted all the students that we can accept. So the sooner that you can get on the ball with this, the better. Also, when it comes to different programs, one program, sport program, or intelligence minds program might be more important to you than another. 
Everyone is different. You might be into arts. So you're going to want to research that as well. Now, adjusting to the high altitude can be challenging. So make sure that when you get here, you stay very hydrated and allow yourself time to acclimate. So you'll want to pay attention to your body's signals, your family's body signals, and even your pet. So sometimes you might get lightheaded. You'll definitely want to take a break. Pets might throw up because they're not used to the pressure and the change in the altitude. Children, the same. So that's pretty normal. I'm not a doctor. I highly recommend you speak with a doctor, but it's perfectly normal for people to get headaches. Um, but just take it easy. Make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you're eating snacks and all that. Oftentimes, people are doing so much and they're moving, they're stressed out, and it, you know, their immune system weakens and then they start getting sick and things like that. And that's the last thing that you want before you move. So make sure you have those snacks, those vitamins on deck. And speaking of vitamins and your health, as you're transitioning, because it sucks to wait to the last minute on uh, this next point about lining up your doctors. So I recently started the process of finding a new healthcare provider. I switched over to a different company and it was just purely out of convenience to go where my kids go. But because I had not gone within their window, which I think is one year, I should have scheduled something sooner, but I totally spaced it, got busy and forgot. I started looking around for other healthcare providers and they said it would take several months for new patients to on board or whatever it is they do. Now, honestly, I was shocked because I had never experienced that before. I've always been able to get in within a week or so. So I wouldn't wait to the last minute to line up those doctors or at least start researching those doctors. I know that some people will like to make their appointments in their current town so that they have a little more time as they come over. Just don't forget to do that and don't wait until the last minute when your kid has an ear infection and you're scrambling or you're sitting at ER because you forgot to sign up as a new patient here in Colorado Springs. All right, so it could be lonely as you are relocating here. You don't know anybody. You don't really have a ton of friends. So my last tip for you is to join some local Facebook and Reddit groups. Now, these groups are brutally honest and can give you a lot of valuable valuable tips when it comes to living in Colorado Springs. Plus, you can find some new friends and meet some amazing people on there. I do encourage you to join small groups inside of our communities um, so that you can feel comfortable as quickly as possible. Oftentimes, if your kids are in sports or activities at school, it's really helpful because then you can show up to those kinds of things and make friends there with the other parents. Or if you're really into hiking, then you can join some hiking groups, join a CrossFit gym or something where it's just a little bit more community style, maybe a cycling class or something that you go to every week, a Zumba class that you want to go to every week and start meeting people that way. Otherwise, it can feel a little lonely here. I hear people all the time say that they struggle with making friends. So mom, groups. One thing I really do like is the library at C21. It's got a lot of stuff. It's huge. It's on the north end of town and there's a lot of stuff to do in there. Tons of books. I often see moms in there with their babies or with their kids volunteering, things like that. So you can get to know people a lot quicker and have people to talk to about just your move, your relocation and, and not feel so alone because Colorado Springs is a very friendly place. But it is oftentimes hard to find those friendly people and when you're not just out and about grocery shopping or whatever. Earlier in the video, I had mentioned that I would provide some tips and tricks on avoiding getting scammed when it comes to finding a rental online, whether that's on Zillow, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. What you want to do is if you see something that you're interested in, Make sure that you call the office of the property to verify that it's legit before you start. And you're not going to call the number that's listed, obviously, on the listing that you find on that particular website. If it is for, say, like Solid Rock or Remax Advantage, you're going to go to Google and find their legit office number not the number on the listing, but you're gonna call the office to make sure that the property is legit. You're just gonna call them up and you're going to say, hey, I found this property, whatever address it is, 1711 Spring Street, for example. I found this home for rent online and I just want to make sure that it's still available. And how do I apply? So they're gonna send you a legit application to apply for that property. And then you're just gonna avoid all the scamming altogether. There's so much to know and learn about living in Colorado Springs. So 
watch this video next about the pros and cons of living in Colorado Springs. I think it'd be very helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm always posting videos about Colorado Springs and surrounding areas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.